Ariel Helwani in New York City for the UFC and Reebok press conference alongside UFC CEO Lorenzo Fertitta. And Lorenzo, congratulations on this big deal. My favorite thing of the whole press conference, it all started at Schwartz's Deli in Montreal, the world famous. You know, one of the great things about the UFC is we get to travel to all these great cities. And one of the priorities is always to find the best food in these respected cities. And Schwartz's is always at the top of our list the uh, corned beef sandwich. And it actually started with a conversation with Swizz, who was working with Reebok at the time, and we were talking about what could we do to further elevate the sport and create opportunities and really build a business both for the athletes and, and the industry. And um, he was really responsible for kind of pushing the marriage and pushing this, uh, this partnership together. And then subsequently we went and met at Reebok at their headquarters. And over the last year and a half, two years, we've developed this, this partnership. As far as the process goes, I mean, I'm assuming you talked to other apparel companies as well. Was Reebok from the beginning the one that you wanted or were there serious discussions with others as well? Well, we talked to everybody. The thing we liked about Reebok was that their focus was more on training than any of the others, meaning that, yes, they still have their team sport with the NHL, I believe, but overall, their whole focus is, uh, was and can, will continue to be CrossFit, which is personalized individual training. So they really understood the, the idea of this combat training division and saw where things were going, where everybody doesn't want to be a fighter, but they see the positive aspects of training in a similar fashion. So could, you know, if you have 35 million people training in martial arts around the world, yet there's really no uh, major brand, no global apparel brand that is creating product for their needs. You know, and they've seen great success with CrossFit because there's a lot of people that do CrossFit and they want gear for them. And so they saw a void in the market and that's where we come in and fill that for them. And we help them reach all these areas around the globe that they want to be successful in places like Latin America, Brazil, areas of Europe, and then obviously Asia. So it's kind of a one-stop brand shop for them. Are you concerned at all? You know, combat sports, we see it in boxing, we see it of course in MMA individuality is a big part of it. Everyone wears their own different thing and you know are you concerned when you say the word uniform it feels uniform right that's the the definition of the word. Are you concerned that some of that will be lost in this? You know that was one of our concerns and something that has been addressed with Reebok and their and the designers you know going in we always felt like there was value to some of our athletes that came in and created a persona whether it was Chuck with his Iceman shorts or Rich Franklin wearing pink or whatever it might be. So what I think they've successfully done with what they've showed us is create a look that will signify that that is the UFC, so it's a point of differentiation for our product, but at the same time allow for fighter individuality. And you'll know kind of where the fighter basically is in the rankings and whether they're champion or not champion, maybe what country they're from or what their individual style is. So they'll be working with, their, with our athletes to do that because then the most important thing of this all for both the athletes and for Reebok is that the product, they, they want it to sell at retail. So when people are buying things, they want to have that little piece of individuality that a specific fighter in their personality might have and hopefully comes out in the kit. I agree with you. I haven't come up with a better name for uniform. I'm working on it because we're not a team sport. But there will be a semblance of order, I should say. And I'll be honest with you. I believe that if we're going to be or strive to be in the same uh, conversation as the major sports leagues, then we can't have you know guys running out with a mishmash of, of 1-800 radiators and you know dynamic fastener. It's just it's it's just it's tough on the eye and it doesn't look as professional. We're able to do this, clean it up, and at the same time create a platform and invest in a business that the fighters are going to benefit from. And yes, they can still keep their sponsors and do whatever they're, that they're going to do outside of the UFC. So you can become such a successful businessman um, by not making the right kind of deals. I mean, you, you've built your whole career off of that. So when 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 you say that. All the revenue goes to the fighters, and Dana just told me not a single penny goes to the UFC. How, what, I, 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 I sort of struggle to understand what's in it for you guys. Why do you do this from a business perspective? Well, for the term of this deal, that's the case. Now, do we want to make money eventually? Absolutely, but we've always had a long-term view. I'm hoping that 10 years from now, 15 years from now, we've built a big enough business, a retail, where there's going to be money, obviously, to share with the fighters that they're benefiting, and there's going to be some money left over for us. Same principle when we started this and bought the company in 2001. Me and my brother funded this thing for about six years, and the money we invested there has now benefited the fighters and benefited us. So we got to the point where we got past that breaking point, but it was never a six month investment or a two year investment. We had the long term view. And you can't just turn something, you know, the faucet on overnight and, and expect that there's gonna be enough revenue there for everybody. So we decided, you know what? 
we already have this ecosystem where fighters are allowed to make money by, by having sponsors and wearing them into the octagon. We're not going to disrupt that, even though I'm sure that's what everybody thought we were doing. Believe me, we're not, we're not like that. So the idea was, do this deal with Reebok, the money we get from that, we give to the fighters with the hope, the bet, that this turns into a real business. Final question, uh, do you share Dana's sentiment that you know a, a major portion of this is based on the rankings, right? One through five or six, and six through 10, et cetera. The rankings, I feel as a media member, have been somewhat flawed for many different reasons. Do you share Dana's sentiment that they need to change in order, because now it's not just numbers on Fox television, guys are making money off of where they're placed. Do you feel like they need to change as well? I think we need to get more credible media participating in the rankings. People that actually do their homework and spend time and focus and have credibility and that are honest guys. Whether they like a fighter or don't like a fighter, it should never affect whether or not or where they're at in the rankings. And yes, we need to beef that up, but we debated internally about a thousand different ways to figure this thing out. And ultimately, this is an individual sport and it's the ultimate merit sport, right? This is capitalism. The, the, more, the more successful you are, if you eventually become the champion, you're going to make the most money. So we thought that the fairest way to do it was based on, on the rankings. You know, what have they accomplished in this sport? Not necessarily a popularity contest, but truly where you rank in the sport. And uh, like I said, that was the, the best way we could think of to do it. Um, can the rankings get better and tighter? Absolutely. And we're going to try to work forward to doing that. Thank you for the time. And again, congratulations. Thank you.